Good morning, maths people. This is Jerry, up early to bring some scintillating lectures on simultaneous equations. What else would you be doing? Let's face it. So um, today I want to uh, finish or just continue what we were doing on Monday and maybe introduce a kind of very kind of maybe almost confusing thing at the end, but it's something that's very, very important. And just let this sink into your brains uh, and I'll talk about it later on. If you look at these simultaneous equations here, the um, the game here is to find x and y. Okay, that's basically it. But you'll notice on the right hand side here, we've got a five and a four. And this is what's called a an ordinary system of simultaneous equations. But some sometimes, and it happens more often than you would think, um, you have simultaneous equations, two simultaneous equations, or three simultaneous equations, where on the right hand side here, there are only zeros. And that's a very, very important system of simultaneous equations, which happens more often than you think in engineering analysis. So that's uh, something that I want to come back to. How do you solve uh, simultaneous equations with zeros everywhere on the right hand side? Now, if there is a one, if there is one number that's non-zero, then you do exactly what we've been doing here. But if there's if they're all zeros, there's a special it's a special case that you have to take account of, and you have to be a little bit careful. But we come back. We'll do that um, at the end. Okay. So at the moment, I just want to show you what we're what we're doing here. This is what we did last um, last time. And I just want to show you again how you do this. And um, if I if I ask you to do this, uh, so kind of something like this: two um, x minus y is equal to five, three x is two y is equal to four. Um, you, there's a, there's, a, there's a, a methodology that you apply. So the first thing you do maybe is you write it in matrix form. So you write this thing as two minus one, three, and two because they're the numbers multiplying the x's and y's. You write the unknowns as a column, because that's the way matrix multiplication works, and there's no other reason. And then you write the right-hand side as a column. Step two, then, is uh, essentially you bring this inverse over to the other side, because you want to find out what x and y are. So therefore, you multiply both sides with the inverse of the matrix, and on the left-hand side, then, you just get the column. And on the right-hand side, then, you get 2 minus 1, 3, 2, inverse 5 and 4. And then you must get the inverse of this. So the inverse of this is it's 1 over the determinant. So it's 1 over 2 by 2, which is 4, minus minus 1 by 3, which is minus 3, and 2. And this is to, you would change the two twos, which is just gives you two twos, and you change the sign. Okay. So what you end up with then is 1 over 7, I think. And when you multiply this out, folks, on top here, you get 2 by 5 plus 1 by 4. So you get 14 here. And you get minus 3 by uh, 5, which is minus 15 plus 8. I think that's minus 7. And so when you multiply in by 1 over 7, you get 2 and minus 1. So x is 2. Y is equal to minus 1. And you can check that out by substituting back then. All right. So that's what you do. Now, when you get, uh, that's, that, that's two equations and two unknowns. I'm going to go uh, evil now on you and show you what happens when if you have three simultaneous equations. So you have three equations in the unknowns, x, y, and z, for instance. So let me just show you, I'll just do the example of the, 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 the examples given in the book, just because it's right in front of me. So it's, um, so use matrices. And here's the here's the, 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 the equations: three x plus y minus z is equal to four. Two x minus y plus two z is equal to ten. And x minus three y minus four z is equal to five. So let me just check that that's what we have. Um, maybe it's 4, 2x minus 3 is 2z is equal to 10, and x minus 3 is 5 is equal to 5. Okay. So the game here in this particular situation is to find what x is, what y is, and what z is. Now, just to, in preparation, oh, this is 4z here. Isn't that right? Yeah. Now, in preparation for what we're going to do next, we look on the right-hand side first, we see that there's, uh, it's not all zeros. They're not all zeros. So this is not a special, special case that you have to worry about, okay? So let's look at this situation here. Now, if you remember this from secondary school, 
um, this is horrendous, you know, three equations and three unknowns. It's, it's kind of difficult. Usually what you would do here is you maybe, you go to the first equation here, you solve for Z in terms of X and Y, and then you replace Z here and Z here by what you get from the first equation. And then you get to, so it's, 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 it's difficult. It's, it takes a bit of time. And in matrices, it doesn't unfortunately make it easier, but it does actually put a structure to the solution. Now, so the first thing you do maybe is you write down uh, the matrix form of the simultaneous equations. And in this case, now we're going to have a three by three matrix of coefficients. So we're going to have three, one, minus one. We're going to have two, minus one, two. And we're going to have one, minus three, minus four. X, Y, Z equal to four, 10, and five. Okay, so it's, it's the, set, the setup is exactly the same. A little bit more complicated here now because we've got three unknowns, but pretty much the same. And hopefully you see where all these matrices are coming from. So therefore then to get, um, to get then X, Y, and Z, you multiply both sides by the inverse. And when you multiply the left-hand side by the inverse of this matrix, you just get I and I by the column, just gives you the column. So what you have to get here then is three, one minus one, two minus one, two, and one minus three minus four, inverse. And you get four, 10, five. And remember how that calculating inverses of three by three matrices is difficult. The first thing you do is you have to get the determinant. So um, let me just do this down on the bottom of the page here, just to, just to say page, just because I'm running out of paper in, the, uh, in, the, in, the, in this end of day situation. So um, the first thing you do, folks, is you must sometimes uh, you can solve for x, y, and z because the determinant of the matrix is zero. That's, so the first thing you always have to check is if the determinant of the matrix um, that you started with here is zero or not. So let's to get to the terms of this. This is three, one, minus one. This is two, minus one, two. And this is one minus three minus four. So what you do then is you write down the first one, which is three. Remember we, we did this the, 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 other, the other day. So you um, cover up the first row and first column and you get the determinant of what's left. So minus one by minus four gives you four and minus six then. So you get here, you get four minus minus six. You then to go to the second element of the first row and you change its sign. So it's minus one. You cover up the first row and you cover up the second column and it's two by minus four, which is minus eight, minus two, which is minus 10. So let me just write that down here, minus 10. And the last one then is minus one into two by minus three, which is minus six, and then minus minus one, which is plus one. So when you do that, folks, here you get that's three, that's four plus six, which is 10, which is 30, I think, plus 10. And this is minus six plus one, which is minus five plus one, which is plus five. So I think you get 45 here. Uh, I think I made a mistake because they're getting a different. Oh, the, the example in the book, folks, having checked it, I thought I checked it, this is two Y up here. And this is a two here, and this is a two here. So this must be two here, and this is a two here. So this is 20. And so you get 55. All right? Sorry about that. So uh, you get 55, which is not equal to zero, which is great, yay. So we, we can now solve for x, y, and z. If this determined was zero, you walk away. All right, you can't do it. You can't find x, y, and z. Okay, so that's uh, that's the first thing you do. We get the determinant, and then remember what we, the next step you do then is you get the you take this matrix here and you you get its transpose. So this is called the cofactor matrix. So this is number we call it step four. So the cofactor matrix is um, sorry. Let's just just get the transpose of the matrix. So three. 2 minus 1, 2 minus 1, 2, 1 minus 3 minus 4. If you get the transpose of that, folks, you get 3, 2 minus 1, 2 minus 1, 2, and 1 minus 3 minus 4. So the first row becomes the first column, the second row becomes the second column, and the third row becomes the third column. All right. Then what you do is, unfortunately, you do this messing about. With uh, you get the cofactor matrix then, 
and or, or, or sorry, what's called the adjoint matrix. And the adjoint matrix then is equal to, remember we, we, we did this, this nonsense last time, it, it's tricky. Um, you have to remember what this, this place signs, remember the, 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 the place signs, you have to keep this in your head, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus. Um, when you're doing the adjoint matrix, you have to keep this in the background somewhere. There's a little speech bubble in your brain. So the first element here is you go to this element here and you cross out, you um, look at the determinant of what's left when you cross out the first row and the first column in the transpose. So you get the term of this. So this is one by minus four, which is plus four, and then minus three by minus two, which is minus six, but it's minus that. So I think you get 10 here. Okay, then you do the same thing here. So you you, you get the, you get the, the um, it's two by minus four, which is minus eight, and then minus minus, and then minus three by minus one, which is plus three. So it's minus. Um, let me do that again. It's two by minus four, which is minus eight, and then minus plus three because minus one by minus three is plus. So you get. Uh, uh, minus 11, but you must be careful because this is this this place here is in is in has a negative place sign. So minus 11 by minus one gives you plus 11. And up here, then you get two by two, which is four, four minus one, which is three, and because of plus sign here, you leave it as it is. Down here, then what you do is you get the, the determinant of two by minus four, which is minus eight, and minus two. So you get minus 10 here, but because the sign, the place sign is minus, this becomes plus 10. Okay. Then you go in here, so you get three by minus four, which is minus 12, and minus 12 plus one, which is um, minus 11, and then it's just minus 11 here. Okay, folks, so you're, you're running out of um, the will to live here. I know that, but let me just do this one here. To get this one here, you cover up, in the transpose, you cover up the, the column that it's on and the row that it's on. And so you're left with three by two, which is six, and six minus minus two, which is And the last one here, guys, I'm just gonna just write out what it is. It's minus five. 11 minus 7. So it's just horrendous calculation. But the good thing about this is that it's a recipe and it's the same recipe each time. There's no kind of, if you go back to the way, the way you did this in secondary school, you picked one of these at random and you solved for either X, Y, and Z, and there's no structure to it. Whereas in this play, this way, it's always the same complicated, there's no doubt about it, it's always the same complicated methodology that you use. And that's the attraction of, one of the attractions of using uh, matrices to solve simultaneous equations. And as I said, the reason why you're doing this at all is because so, so, so solving simultaneous equations is the, is the most important calculation in all engineering software. Everything reduces to simultaneous equations in the end. Okay? So um, let me just go back here. Now we haven't finished yet. So we so we, we know we, we, but we now know what the inverse is. So x, y, and z, it's the inverse of this. And remember what the inverse is. The inverse then is one over the determinant times the adjoint matrix, and you must multiply that by that by the column four, ten, five. So here's your solution at the end. I know this is horrendous, and but you get x, y, and z is one over fifty-five because that was the determinant. And you write down this the joint matrix here, which is 10, 11, 3, 10, minus 11, minus 8, minus 5, 11, minus 7. And you multiply that then by 4, 10, and 5, because that's the right-hand side. So you multiply the inverse of the matrix by the right-hand side, and now you, 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 off you go. So it's 1 over 55, and you're going to get a square matrix by a column, so you're going to get a column. So this is four by 10 by four, which is 40, plus 11 by 10, which is 110, plus three by five, which is 15. That's the first entry in your column, which is 165. Okay, the next one then is 10 by four, which is 40, minus 110, minus 40. And the last one then is minus 20, 